Well, hello everybody. Good morning. I think today's video is going to be a bit of a lazy one from me and a bit different because I am on my way on a very uh, brief, say three day photography trip and I have, ooh, oh dear, I have about a six hour drive ahead of me followed by a ferry crossing because I'm going to the Isle of Mull in Scotland. So I thought today's video would be all about the mistakes I made as a beginner landscape photographer. Not necessarily mistakes I suppose but just thing, I can't get out of this parking space, things I didn't know and that is what we're going to talk about on this drive today but first I need to uh, <laughs> I need to get out of this parking space. Ah, right. Onwards and upwards. Today's video has been sponsored by Squarespace. So, if you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. So I suppose the first one would be um, sort of the understanding of light and subject. It's a bit of a funny one, this, because when I first started you know, when I first realised that landscape photography was a genre and that I could go out and photograph nature, like, I didn't quite understand it. I know that might sound daft, but I think there's a lot that we take for granted as photographers, landscape photographers, um, technical things with cameras, but also just the understanding of how an image looks good and what makes a good image. You see, I got some really cheap Koken filters back in the day. This is years ago, decades ago. And they were those ones that put a purple cast on everything. And I remember, I have a very, very specific memory of going down to the beach with a, I don't know, like an ND filter, maybe it was like a three stop ND filter and a graduated filter. And I remember getting up at four in the morning, going down to shoot sunrise on the beach, setting up with no idea of, no understanding of light and no understanding of composition, just an assumption that by getting up early and going to the beach, I would get a good photograph. And I had a friend, a friend who was a really good landscape photographer and all of his seascape stuff looked awesome. It was nice light, nice clouds, good composition. Um, and I failed to recognize those things within the photograph. I just assumed beach, sunrise, jobs are good. And that's not the case. And I remember taking this photograph and the weather was grey and miserable. The photograph was really dark, it was a long exposure. I was using a really cheap kit lens. And when I got the image back I was incredibly disappointed because it was bland, flat, grey, soft. It was just horrible image. And I remember asking my friend the question, like, why doesn't this image look good? How, why doesn't this image look like yours? And it was because I didn't have the understanding of the basics, which is light, subject, and composition. And I really think we take that for granted. You know, at least I suppose this video is for anybody who is brand new to photography, brand new to landscape photography. We should never take for granted the simple things, such as, well, I guess just the understanding of light and the components of an image. And I didn't know that when I first picked up a tripod and a camera. So I mentioned before that I was disappointed with the image because it was soft and that I was using a cheap kit lens. And that's another thing that took me a while to understand. And not, I don't know, not necessarily understand, but it, it was a difficult pill to swallow. And that is the fact that the quality of an image is hugely, hugely down to the lens. Now, I know there's the, an argument that gear doesn't really matter. And to an extent it doesn't, but also to an extent it does. And the thing that matters more than anything is a good quality lens. And I remember shooting images um, with really cheap kit lenses. And I remember once, Again, we must be going back to the early 2000s. I bought a, uh, a really cheap, I think it was something like a, oh man, I wish I could remember it. I wish I could remember. I think it was a Sigma, and I think it was something like a 50 to 300 or 50 to 400, something like that. It was so long ago, and it cost me 99 pounds. It was dirt cheap, and it had macro feature on it. And 
I was really excited by this lens, but at the same time, I was always incredibly disappointed because the images didn't look as good and as crisp as other images that I was seeing of fellow photographers and friends of mine. And it did, it took me a while then. <laughs> and it's such a difficult pill to swallow. The fact that, okay, so you've just gone to the shop and you've just spent, I don't know, 800 or a thousand pounds on a camera and you think that's where the, that's where the money needs to be spent is on the camera. And then it's like, oh, hang on a minute. You know, to get the next level of quality in my images, I need to double that <laughs> and spend it on a single lens. That is a tough pill to swallow and that took me a good few years to really understand and accept. So um, yeah, I guess number two is that the quality is all in the glass. It's all about those lenses and that. It's not an easy one to take it, not an easy one. Um, but yes, I have another one for you. Something that I didn't quite know and understand when I first got into landscape photography and that is the tripod. Now, I'm not gonna say that you need to spend money on an expensive tripod to get stability, because that isn't always the case. And actually nowadays it's more, you know, it's far less the case because mirrorless cameras are smaller and lighter, so they can sit on a lighter tripod. Tripods in general have come down a lot in price. You know, you can get knockoff carbon fiber tripods on Amazon for half the price of a branded tripod. And to all intents and purposes, if you're just beginning and starting out, they're all right, they're not bad. And another thing, even with the cheapest, flimsiest tripod, if you're out and about and there's no wind, like a lovely, calm, still day, you're not gonna get, it's not gonna make any difference at all. Um, but one thing that does make a difference with your tripod, and this took me a while to really understand, and again, it was a difficult pill to swallow, having to spend like, you know, I don't know, 200, 300 pounds on a tripod, is with cheap tripods, you tend to get what's known as slippage. And that's when you have your camera on the tripod and you rotate it to shoot a portrait-oriented image. And then, say you take a five-second exposure, what happens is, because it's a cheap camera, it's a cheap tripod plate, uh, you get slippage, which is when the weight of the lens pulls the camera slowly down. Uh, because the plate isn't a very good plate and it doesn't, there's no friction between the plate and the camera. But another thing, that actually, I only realized this probably, I don't know, two years ago, maybe three years ago, was the addition of an L bracket. Honestly, if you don't, if you're a landscape photographer or you find yourself shooting a fair few landscapes and you don't have an L bracket attached to your camera, just stop this video, go and get one. Right, there's, I've got my gear blog below, and I think if you've got a Canon, there's an L bracket there. But you can get them quite cheap on Amazon. Go and get one, stick it on your camera, and then even if you are using a cheaper tripod, you don't get slippage, because instead of rotating the ball head on your tripod, you just unclip your camera, flip it around, put it back on, and jobs are good. In. So yeah, uh, tripod, cheap tripod, slippage, and L bracket. I suppose would be things that I didn't know when I was just beginning out in landscape photography. So I thought of another one. Another thing that I didn't quite get, or I couldn't quite get my head around or understand when I first started landscape photography. And that is focus, focusing. Um, where to focus, how to get the sharpest image. And I'll tell you what I did, I'll tell you what I did. I, uh, I was going on a trip, I think I was, I can't remember where I was going, but I was going on a, a trip somewhere, not too far, but specifically for landscape photography. And it was plaguing me, I didn't know, because I was getting so many conflicting pieces of advice, you know, focus one third in, focus two thirds in, find your hyperfocal distance of that specific lens, etc, etc. So what I did was I went, um, geez, I went to the, uh, I took my camera and tripod and literally went out on the street, 
just like a main road not too far from my house and I made sure that that main road had lots of cars parked down the street and a big building right far in the distance that would be infinity and I took three photographs one photograph I focused on a car that was pretty near to my camera lens um, which I think was about one third into the image the second photograph I focused exactly halfway into the photograph into the image and then the third shot I focused on the building right in the far distance that would have represented infinity and then like two minutes later I went back home whacked the files in the computer opened them all in Lightroom and uh, looked at which one was the sharpest front middle and back and this that and the other and it was infinity and I tried this with a few different lenses I think two or three lenses and it was always infinity not you know the, the the image where I focused furthest away had had the overall best sharpness and that must have been a hey, nine or ten years ago and pretty much ever since then I've always always focused to infinity unless I have an obvious subject um, in that case obviously I focus on that subject and I'm a bit lost here Ugh. Where are we going? All right, first exit. So I'm really looking forward to this uh, this trip to Mull. I'm only there for three days, which is a shame, but um, the guys who I'm hanging out with, they've actually come over from uh, Canada and America, so they've traveled much further than me. One of them has a camper van, so that's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be like, we can have a, a bit of a convoy, a camper van convoy. Uh, and the other two staying in a cottage, which would be nice because then I can use their shower, toilets, and electricity. So it's perfect! Perfect! But yes, very good. The weather is beautiful. And everything, everything, everything. Everything's looking good. Hey, weather's taking a bit of a turn for the worst. Hope it's not like this on the mall. The vessel is fitted with lifeboats, light rafts, light boys and other buoyant apparatus, all of which can be manually launched or will float free in the event of the ship sinking. The vessel is also equipped with sufficient light jackets for donning instructions. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Isle of Mull. Uh, what can I say? It's beautiful. The sun is shining, it's calm, it's still, it's gorgeous. The bluebells are out, the spring greens are out, and all in all, I'm very, very excited to be here. Now, I need to end this video soon because I am just a couple of miles from my campsite. And I wanted to end, I was trying to think what I could end this video with, you know, what I wish I'd known when I first started out years and years and years ago. I, I don't know now and I think the final thing that I'm gonna talk about is confidence um, you see when I first start out, started out doing photography not only landscape photography but photography in general sort of 15 16 years ago you know you look at images by other photographers and you think god I wish I could take an image that good or I'll never be able to take an image that good and I hear this quite a lot on my channel now I'm not saying my works like really good or anything but people do comment saying I wish you know I wish I could take an image that good or I'll never be able to take a photograph that nice and the truth of the fact is you can there's no secret formula there's a few things I mentioned earlier on in this video about lenses and tripods and composition and lights but there really is no secret formula the truth is half of the images that I take that I consider keepers if you were there with me you'd have taken the same photograph it would have been identical there are no secrets so I kind of wish I knew this um, when I first started out and rather than just looking at the work of others and thinking that mine will never ever be that good um, yeah there are no secrets so that's that and that I suppose is my final thing in this video whatever this video is I don't even know um, I've enjoyed rambling onto the camera for the past six hours Hopefully, it's only been six minutes for you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm at my campsite now, more or less. So I'm going to pull into here, get set up, have some food, and then it should pretty much be time for bed.
and a massive thank you once again to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you don't know who Squarespace are, they're an all-in-one platform where you can go and you build your own website using their website and you don't need any coding skills whatsoever. So go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and get a free try. And if you like free trial, and I stress only if you like free trial, use the off code Heaton for 10% of your first purchase. So the van's all set up now and I am just about to lie down and go to bed. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. There's going to be lots of photography to come this weekend, but um, it's been a long drive and a long day. So for me, I'm going to have a nice, quiet night's sleep. Good night, everybody. <sighs> should have called or sent me a WhatsApp or something. Sorry, man. It's okay. It's okay.